Facebook ads for real estate agents 2022. If you want to know exactly step by step, click by click, how to run the highest converting real estate lead generation ads on Facebook in 2022, then this is going to be the video for you. And I want to explain a couple quick things before we get in. Number one, what worked in 2021 does not work anymore in 2022 if you want to get the highest conversion with the lowest cost per lead. So, what I'm going to be doing is number two showing you the secret the wizard trick at the end of this tutorial that people like ryan sirhand and ad agencies use that people usually get charged five thousand dollars a month in order to use and i'm going to show you exactly what the trick is and i'm excited to announce what everybody's been asking for i just launched my brand new free social media masterclass, breaking down all of the different platforms, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, Google ads, and everything you need to do in order to crush it in 2022 on social media as a realtor and how to close up to five more deals per month entirely from social media with no prospecting. So if you want my brand new free 2022 social media training, drop a comment below and I will reply to your comment with it. So without further ado, let's dive into this full Facebook ads for real estate tutorial and show you how to crush it in 2022. All right, guys, it's time to walk through this full step-by-step, click-by-click tutorial, and I'm going to do it in a way where not only is it hopefully going to be the clearest explanation you'll be able to find on YouTube, but also by the end of this, you'll be able to run your first Facebook ad. A couple of other things I'm going to do just to give you even more value. Number one, I'm going to give you all of the little ninja tricks along the way so that you know how to get the best results with your first Facebook ad. I'm also going to, at the end, explain how to do it for not just buyers, but also for sellers and listings in this crazy hot competitive market. And after that, we're going to bring it full circle at the end with that ninja trick I was telling you about that people like Ryan Serhan and his group, as well as big ad agencies use that they don't tell anybody unless you have to go, you know, pay for their stuff for 5,000 a month. So without further ado, let's dive in. What we're going to do, you can see up here, is we're going to, on the left-hand corner, go to Facebook Ads Manager. And this is going to load up our Ads Manager account. And we're greeted by the campaign setting. So as you can see here at the top, there's going to be three different components to a Facebook ad, which is campaign, ad set, and the ads. The campaign level is basically building the foundation or the structure of the intent of the campaign. The ad set is going to be things like your targeting for location, for specific types of people, as well as your budget and the duration of the ad. And then the ads is going to be the creative aspect of it, both the copy and the visual. And if we're doing lead generation like we are, it's going to be the lead form. So what we're going to do is click create. Now, you're greeted after you click create, you're prompted with choose campaign objective or what they used to refer to it as your marketing objective. So you can see there's three different categories here. And I'm going to explain a caveat to this at the end because you might see something slightly different. You'll never have to worry about conversion because that is for e-commerce products, online products. Awareness is something that is important, but again, if you watch my free training, you'll see why that's the first ad you ever need to run if you want to absolutely crush it on Facebook ads, um, but that's in my training. And then consideration is where we'll be able to start. So what we're going to do here is you have two options that you primarily need to take into consideration. Traffic, which if you hover over the eye, you'll see send people to a website or lead generation, which is using a lead form to capture information. Now, the caveat that it was saying is that Facebook, as always, as frustrating as this is, is always rolling out new interfaces of how this looks. So this is how most people are going to see it. However, you might see something slightly different. The good part is, is even though it's going to look different, I've seen what the alternatives look like, and they still have traffic and lead generation. So don't don't worry about it. Now, you're going to use traffic if, for example, you can see here at eXp Realty where I am, all of the agents in my organization use 
KV Core because we get it for free. It's a free IDX website where it also captures lead information and goes directly to the CRM. So if you have an IDX website with lead capture, what you're going to do is going to choose traffic. If you do not, you're going to have to choose lead generation in order to capture the leads information. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a lead generation ad and the only difference with traffic versus lead generation is traffic is just less steps because at the end, the whole process is the same. At the end, instead of creating a lead form, you just plop the link in there, the same link I will show you for the lead form, and then you're done. So let's go ahead and click lead generation and go. Now, for the campaign name, I always recommend uh, making the campaign name very literal. And again, you can see here the three different steps we'll go through campaign, ad set and ad starting with the campaign. So let's just say for the first one, we'll start off with, you know, buyers lead generation March, and then we can see it's March 1st, 2022. So I like to make it very literal just because that way when we're looking at the dashboard that we just came from, you'll know exactly which ad you're looking at so that if you need to make adjustments or see the performance, you can do that. Now, for the special ad category, we have to use this for housing. So you always have to select this. And I know there's people that are going to say, well, Mike, I'm just promoting my real estate team or an event. Your Facebook page is a realtor's Facebook page. It doesn't matter how creative you want to get. If you try and avoid the special ad category so that you can get other targeting options, a couple things might happen. Your account can get disabled. Your ad will get uh, you know, paused or not run. Um, and you can just get completely deactivated. You don't want that. Always choose the special ad category and you have to choose the country of which you're going to be running your campaign. So if I'm using my country, Canada, or if you're using the United States, you have to do that. Now, the last two things are A-B testing and campaign budget optimization. You don't need to be doing A-B testing too much. Um, over time, you can do this, and that's just to test different creatives. If you want to choose two different images of a property and see which one converts the highest, I've more or less seen that it doesn't make much of a difference, um, especially on lower budgets when you're spending $20, $30 a day. And campaign budget optimization, or CBO is what some call it with the acronym, is let's say you've got three different ads that you wanna run, and you wanna test which ones are going to perform the best. Instead of just doing $10, $10, $10, what campaign budget optimization allows you to do is put $30 towards all three of them, and then Facebook's algorithm is going to know which ones perform the best and which ones perform the worst, and it will automatically allocate the budget to the ones that perform better and remove from the ones that don't. This is more of an advanced strategy that you do not need to do until you get to the point where you're spending a little bit more money, you know, $50, $60 a day, and you do not need this in order to get leads. So we're going to ignore it. Now, we're going to come up to the ad set name. So typically what the ad set is going to, again, be the targeting. So let's say if we're using my city, for example, I would say Calgary buyers lead generation. And then we're going to select the lead method. For the lead method, we want to select instant forms. We don't want an automated chat um, because chatbots can work, but they don't work like they used to. They do not work incredible like they used to. They still get by, but I don't recommend it compared to what uh, the performance used to be. And you don't want calls either because it just simply doesn't convert. And you want to select your Facebook page. So we're going to come down here and select mine. Now, if you have not selected or actually accepted the terms that you need to for a lead generation ad, you'll be prompted to go through it and it's the only way you can run a lead ad. Now, you come down here, you've got your budget and your schedule. Watch what happens over here. So on the right hand side, you have your audience definition. So is it too specific? Is it too broad? Is it just right? And you've got your estimated daily results. Now again, Estimated is very loose here, um, but it's going to show you the reach and the amount of leads. I'm going to show you a couple things to because I see a, a, an issue that some people run into that scares them, um, and I'll hopefully be able to ease your pain a little bit. So we're going to usually choose a daily budget. You have daily or lifetime. I like to choose daily, and it will spend this amount daily within reason, a little bit less um, if need be. So you can either edit this by switching the toggle. And if we look down, you'll see this continues to change on the right side. And one cool feature is if you spend, you know, more than you're used to in this account, then it's going to 
give you a bit of a warning so that you don't overspend. Um, now, the issue that I was going to tell you about, and you can come up here and edit this here as well, is let's look down here at leads in the bottom right corner. And if I go to $10 a day, you're going to see four to seven leads, $5 a day, three to 13, $1 a day, you'll see no leads. Now, I will come back to this once I actually uh, select the location and it'll make more sense, but it's going to say zero leads down here. This does not mean you're going to get zero leads. Um, it's just Facebook trying to get you to spend more money in order to get better results. So after we choose our daily budget, which by the way, I recommend starting at least $20 a day because ad cost is increasing. Choose your start date. I typically recommend starting you know, tomorrow uh, to give your ad time to get approved. And then maybe we want to run it for two weeks and run it now, I always recommend selecting an end date because sometimes you'll run your ad, completely forget it's running, and uh, you know, you're know you wasting money. So now we've got our audience. Now again, this is the ninja stuff that I'm gonna be showing you at the end, which is basically going directly to the people that are confirmed to be in the market to buy or sell or most likely to be in the market to buy or sell right now. That's where the craziness happens. Uh, but for now, let's run our first ad. So we have to address the location. So we're going to come here. You've got a couple options, people living in this location or recently visited people living in people recently in or people traveling. If you're in a market with a lot of relocation, you can get away with people living in or recently in this location because they might be recently there to look at moving them. However, for markets that are not popular for relocation, typically you just want to have people living in there. So we're going to choose my city, for example, here. And again, you'll only be able to do a 15 mile radius. So let me show you what I was talking about in terms of seeing zero leads. If we go down to $10 a day, you're going to see zero leads here. That's not the case. You could still get leads at $10 a day, um, but it is better to start to spend a little bit more because again, over time, ad costs has gotten a little bit more expensive. So you can't choose age or gender because of the fact that, um, again, it's a special ad category. This is where things get crazy. So not many people know this, which is a really cool trick. So if you're in the United States, now you don't do this for Canada, I'll explain what you do after. But if you're in the United States, let's look at some of the targeting options that we have. We have things like, Zillow. And again, for whatever reason, Facebook sometimes takes a second, you know, for this stuff to actually show up. But you've got things like Zilla, Zillow, geez, uh, Trulia. Look at this one for sale by owner. Let's look at this mortgage loans. You have FHA loans. You have, you know, realtor.com. So what you can do is in the United States, you can kind of niche down a little bit extra by going to people that are more or less the type of people that would be interested in buying or selling right now. Now in Canada, I typically leave this blank um, just because we don't have some of these options up here. And thankfully, uh, Facebook's algorithm is so powerful that it always is able to kind of within reason after a few days, figure out what the right audience is so that you don't have to. So don't worry about it if you're in Canada, leave it blank, but in the States, you just have a little cherry on top. Languages, leave it in most cases. If you are running a Spanish ad, maybe you're, you know, you've got a big pull in the Spanish or Hispanic community, sure, you can go ahead and adjust this or French, whatever, um, but I usually leave it blank. Now, you do not wanna choose automatic placements. This is a big, massive, waste of money. Um, I spent over a million dollars on Facebook ads in 2021 and I've proven what works. So we want to make sure that we're going to what works and not wasting money. This is Facebook just trying to use more of your money. So what we're going to do is we're going to just use the trusty three that I've always used. And we've again proved this with millions of dollars worth of data um, that we've spent with our own money. Um, so usually what I like to do is use Facebook newsfeed Instagram feed and marketplace. And those are the three that I always recommend using. So you don't waste money. Now, what we're going to do is come down to the last part. You can't choose anything for, you know, optimize uh, leads because we want leads and then cost control. You can leave this as well. So now let's go on to the last component, which is going to be the ad set or the which is going to be the ad. And this is going to be the copy, the creative and the lead form. And then we'll get into sellers and the ninja trick. So again, typically recommend the ad name. So maybe, you know, own buyers, lead gen, whatever, just think literal. Um, you have to connect your Instagram account. So making sure that you've got that dialed in. 
And then now what we're going to do is we're going to come down here and for your ad setup, you've got a couple different options. You've got single image or video and then carousel. Now, I typically find that for most properties, unless they're stunning and the photos are incredible, that single image works very well because it intrigues people. However, when you have a property that is gorgeous inside or any unique features inside that really would entice people, I recommend using carousel. Let's play a little game here because there's three photos that you should not be including in a carousel because they are the three key decision-making photos and if you give them, your ad cost goes up, your conversion goes down because people have enough information to make an educated decision. If you leave them out, your ad cost goes down and your conversion skyrockets. Drop a comment and let me know if you think you know what the three photos you should leave out are and I will reply to you with the correct answer. So we're gonna use a single photo for this example and now we get to edit the media which is going to be the creative the photo or the video so let's go ahead and edit this now we can come back and you can see here um we're going to add media now we're going to be doing first the buyer's lead generation so we'll just choose a picture of like a a property for example um you know something that relates to your market this was a um, you know, all of these were my listings. So we can do this now, original or one-to-one -one, square, always choose square. If you look at this and you choose original and the horizontal or landscape picture, it for pun intended takes up less real estate space on somebody's screen because you can see the blank spot above and the bottom. Whereas square takes up the most amount of space possible. So you want to choose square uh, so that it takes up more people's screen. Now we've got the options of text. So for the buyers one, what we're typically going to do is like a custom list of homes and the most popular properties under a certain price point in your market and you want to choose a price point that's the average price point in your market. So people that are moving up, first time home buyers, moving down, moving laterally can afford it. It's going to open up your volume of potential leads. Additionally, you want to use a photo that's about fifty dollars to $100,000 more than that price point so that it entices people to click because they might think that that's a property that is actually of that price point, but you didn't say that it is, it's just a representation. Um, and you always wanna choose a property that is relatively specific to your market and the types of homes that are there. So in my you know, free training, if you comment below, you'll get it. I actually give you the exact text, but I'll just make it up. So attention, Calgary, the market is hot. And we can just th toss some emojis, kind of break it up. And buyers are losing out on homes every day. These are the most popular listings under 500k active right now. This list is updated in real time every day. So you won't ever miss a property when it goes active or whatever. Um, and then typically what I like to do is just put in your contact information down here. Uh, just again, another opportunity to potentially get reached out by um, every opportunity account. So, you, you know, Mike at, you know, whatever uh, dot com. And you can see over here on the right hand side, you've got the ability to look at how this is going to show up on Facebook, Instagram and Marketplace. Let's do the headline first um, and then I'll show you what that looks like. Most popular listings under 500k right now something like that um, and then if we look we can check Facebook Instagram newsfeed and the Facebook marketplace and usually for the call to action you want to use learn more just because it converts the highest again we've spent endless amounts of money testing this um, and now what we're gonna do is come down and create the lead form so we're gonna click continue now for the lead form, name a very literal Calgary home buyers, March 1st, 2022, whatever. Two types of forms, more intent, higher, or more volume, higher intent. If you're on a smaller budget, $20 or an under, I recommend more volume. If you've got a higher budget, you can do more intent. The only difference is with more volume, it's the lead form is gonna capture their information and then it's just gonna submit it to you. With the higher intent, you'll see, look down here, review screen, it actually prompts the, uh, you know, the lead to confirm their information. So hopefully you get warmer leads. Um, so we'll do more volume. You've got your intro. I typically recommend just using the image that's in your ad, but you can change it if you want to. Um, where would you 
like us to send the free list of homes. You don't need to put a paragraph down here. Don't worry about that. Now for the questions, I always recommend you want name, email, phone number. So typically you want name, email, phone number like this. Um, and you can drag and drop if you want, you know, name to show up first. And then you've got your privacy policy. So with the privacy policy, if you have a website, which everybody should, and that's, you know, one of the many benefits of getting KV Core for free at EXP, um, come down here, put the, um, or sorry, put the link up here for the privacy policy. And there you go. Now, the last part is completion. So let's talk about this for a second. Thank you, click below for your free list of homes. And then you can put something like a call to action if you want to know more about these properties or book a showing or know anything else about the market, feel free to contact me, put your contact information there. So let's look at this for example. View free list of homes. You've got a couple things for this link. And this link, again, with the exact link, if you use traffic in the beginning to just send people directly there. So in an ideal situation, if you were doing traffic, again, we would be doing, for this example, uh, in my city, Calgary, we're gonna do single family, and we're doing under $500,000 is what we chose for this ad. And we're just gonna select this, and this is automatically sorted by popularity, so it's the most popular listings under $500,000, and we are just gonna put this link in here. But again, I said that you can do lead generation if you don't have an IDX website. So a couple different variations. If your brokerage has an IDX website or a website with properties, toss them over there. If not, what you can do is you can just put, you know, view my website here or something like that. And then what you can do is you can put a link to your Facebook page, your website or anything, even if it's not an IDX. And then because you've got their information, you'll just have to manually reach out and then set them up on an MLS search. And then you'll be able to get the lead going. Now let's talk quickly about sellers. So if you're doing sellers, exact same process, start to finish. The only difference is that for example, for the media, typically what you want to do is one of two options, either a, a photo like this that I'm going to use, which is the big sold sign of happy clients outside of the property. This works incredibly well because they can relate to it. People can relate to the fact that again, it's an emotional thing when people can see the excitement, the happiness and the emotion that you know, other people that have worked with you have gotten, then that's going to be a great opportunity. The alternative is like this photo here, where you can, if I hover over this, you'll see. And what this is, is you can see it's like a property with a sold banner um, and contact information. So if you sold a property, that's a great way to get other sellers because you prove you got the job done. I prefer to take the more emotional connection route, which is like this, um, where I've got happy clients that sold that property. So all that you would do is change the image and write text more so along the lines of, you know, congrats to my incredible sellers for selling their home for X list price in X amount of days. Um, you know, and then put like a, a bit of a testimonial about how much they loved working with you. And then the call to action there is usually if you want to know my creative and innovative marketing strategies to get home sold for more money in less time, then click below and you know you can get my free seller's guide and drive traffic to a free seller's guide, or you could drive traffic to a website, blog, article, or even better yet, a YouTube video. So now let's look at the ninja trick. So we're gonna come back here and we're gonna exit out of this. And what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna come over here and I'm going to uh, take you on a little bit of a journey and show you this ninja trick that people use if you really wanna niche down. Um, so what we're going to do is we're gonna come over here to campaigns again, if you wanna see, um, validate that I spent a million dollars last year. You can see my daily budgets on many things that I was running the entire year. Um, what we're going to do is come up here to tools and go to audiences. Now, this is where you're going to actually create your retargeting audiences. So if you wanted to create a retarget audience, you would click custom audience. Now I've got lookalike and special ad audiences. So the strategy here is a special ad lookalike audience. And what a lookalike audience is, is you can upload your database and of past clients that have already bought or sold with you. 
And what Facebook will do is go find more people like that because of their online search patterns, Facebook knows exactly who else is, you know, having those certain patterns and, and behaviors online, which means they are the most likely to buy or sell right now in your market. And the only way to do that is come up here to the customer list and your sources will be customer lists. You can see all the different other options. Um, you can download the formatting guides to see how you can actually do this. You don't need a lifetime value of a customer because that's for e-commerce and products. And again, if you just want to see like a really quick example of this, I'll use like a mock um, kind of example of a CSV. And then you would just come through here and you would kind of, you know, put in, you know, names and um, kind of match each of these fields. And then you'd import and create. Um, so what this is going to do is again, you can see that all of these rows updated and it is right here. Um, is populating because we just uploaded it. And then what you'd be doing is come over to special ad audience and this is going to allow you, um, again, I like two degrees of freedom. It's going to allow you to create a lookalike audience using that customer list. So you come over here, pick the one that again is your past client database. Um, you have to choose a country. And again, don't worry about it. I'll show you how to uh, niche down after this. And then I usually like 10 and two and then you just create the audience. I've already created it as an example right here. And then the only difference is whenever, remember back when I showed you, here's all the crazy, crazy uh, audiences that you could choose from when we were choosing the targeting. Well, that's exactly what we're going to do um, is whenever you want to go back to creating this ad, then you will just go to that. So let me go ahead and just show you quickly um, so that you know exactly what you could do. We will come back here and go to um, my other account that we were using previously. And then I will show this to you, um, in terms of the ad set. So if we come back here to the ad set and we wanted to edit this for Calgary buyers lead gen, this is the ad that we literally just created. Um, if we wanted to come down here, I would be able to, again, under the audience, I would just click here special audience or custom audiences. And here's where they would be is right there. And so you use that um, to run your ad. So that hopefully guys is going to give you a clear explanation of all the different ninja tricks you could do in order to crush you with Facebook ads in 2022. If you have any other questions, drop a comment below. Hopefully you'll check out my uh, free social media training that breaks down every single platform because Facebook um, is great. But I can tell you that there's other platforms that are way better, way cheaper and way higher converting for lead generation. And if you want to know, check it out. So thanks so much for tuning in. As always, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and we will see you next time.